Thank you very much. It's very good afternoon uh, to everybody. I'm honored uh, to participate today uh, in this event dedicated to the Bursley University of uh, Bodhisattva Anagarika Dharmapala. I have some slides, so I would like, um, if you if you allow me, I would like to share the slides. I think you can share. Yes, yeah, I think I can share, yeah. I think now you can see my slides. Is it right? Yeah, it's come. Yes. yes. It should be okay right now, right? Yes. Okay, so uh, it's very interesting that uh, the previous uh, uh, the previous speaker, Professor Asanga Tilakaratne, already mentioned about this, but I would like to elaborate more about this. Because you know what, I've been reading um, different articles on Anagarika Dharmapala's life and uh, heritage, and I couldn't help but notice that uh, few authors pay enough attention to the role of uh, Helena Blavatsky in his life. So I thought there should be some, you know, historical justice, at least to some extent. And I'll take um, Anagarika Dharmapalam's own words from his diaries, from his letters, from his reminiscences, to show what he thought about the role Helena Blavatsky played in his life. That should also help us to better understand the foundation of uh, Anagarika Dharmapala's uh, philosophy. Uh, the first uh, quotation um, will be uh, quite straightforward. That was Anagarya Dharmapala um, wrote in his diary uh, on December 20th, 1930. I'll, I'll quote. The germ of Bodhi was impregnated in my heart by my father. The germ of renunciation was impregnated by my mother. And the devas induced Mrs. Mary Foster of Honolulu to help me. The path of perfection was shown to me by Madame Blavatsky in my 21st year. Very interesting, right? Only three persons was mentioned and Madame Blavatsky is one of them. Um, let me have just a few words about Helena Blavatsky um, because it's, I think it's important to have just a, a fun, just fundamental understanding about who she was. She was an outstanding writer and philosopher. She is the best known for the worldwide renowned books, um, such as um, Easy Sunveld, The Secret Doctrine, and others. She actually left in total more than 15 volumes of her books. Um, but of course, she is uh, mostly known as the main founder of the Theosophical Society and the principal driving force of the Theosophical Movement. Today, the three objectives of the Theosophical Society are as relevant as ever. You know, I want to tell about them. First, to form a nucleus of the universal brotherhood of humanity without distinction of race, creed, caste, sex of color. The second, the, to encourage to study the comparative religion, philosophy, and science. And the last one, to investigate the unexplained laws of nature and the powers lettered in man. These objects today are as relevant as ever, aren't they? The Theosophical Society was growing very fast, and in 1982, they opened their headquarters in Adyar. The Society played an important role in India, and here I would like to just one quotation by Sarvapali Radhakrishnan, famous Indian philosopher and also the second president of India, and I quote, uh, and I quote him, um, when when, with all kinds of political failures and economic breakdowns, breakdowns, we, Indians, were suspecting the values and vitality of our culture, when everything round about us and secular education happened to discredit the value of Indian culture, the Theosophical Movement rendered great service by vindicating those values and ideas. The influence of Theosophical Movement on general Indian society is incalculable. End of quote. But uh, um, uh, let's come back. Um, let's come back uh, to Ceylon of the second half of the 19th century. Uh, the previous speaker already mentioned about this. That was a very interesting connection between Helena Blavatsky, Anagarika Dharmapala, and the famous religion debates, which was between Christian and Buddhist monks. Uh, the uh, Professor Sangatila Karatna already mentioned about this, so I will not go into details, but I can mention what uh, Anagari Hadronpala said. I quote what he said about those debates. The Buddhist 
Bikus had defeated the Christian controversialists and at the public debate, and the germ of modern revival had been impregnated in the island. End of quote. Some time later, the founders of the Theosophical Society, Helena Blavatska and the Colonel Alcott, heard about debate and wrote to the Manx to inform them that they would travel to Salem to help with Buddhist cause in the interest of universal brotherhood. Anagarika Dharmapala wrote, and I quote, they did come to Colombo a few years later, when I was 16. The Buddhists entertained them royally. I remember going up to greet them. The moment I touched their hands, I felt overjoyed. The desire for universal brotherhood, for all the things they wanted for humanity, struck a responsive chord in me. I began to read their magazine. I was not certain, but I felt that somehow the way would be found in the writings of Madame Blavatsky. End of quote. And um, one more quote from Anagarika Dharmapala. Um, I wasn't a boy, but I it gave me a thrill of joy to hear that there were arhats living in Tibet and that Helena Blavatsky was in communication with some of them. I read the Theosophist from the, its first issue and I made up my mind to dedicate my life to study of arhats doctrine." End of quote. Also, Helena Blavatsky induced his father to allow her to take Anagarika Dharmapala to Adyar. As um, he reconnected, and I quote, Madame Blavatsky faced the priest and my united family. She was a wonderful woman with energy and willpower that pushed aside all obstacles. She said, the boy will die if you don't let him go. I will take him with me anyway. And that what happened. Anagarika Dharmapala went together with Helena Blavatsky to India. As he recounted, and I quote again, I went with her to Adyar, and one day in her room, when I was sitting by her alone, she advised me to study Pali and to work for humanity, and that I would get all that I wanted from the Pali books. That was a prophecy, end of quote. That was indeed a prophecy. Uh, later, he acquired a sound knowledge of English, of the English, uh, Sinhalese and Pali languages, and additionally, as we all know, he had also mastered the Buddhist scriptures. Um, later, Anag later, Anagarika Dharmapala became an active member of the um, Theosophical movement. He joined the Theosophical Society in 1984, and he was also the general secretary of the Buddhist branch of the Theosophical Society, and he, um, he ran a, a Sinhalese paper, uh, newspaper and the Buddhist schools in Ceylon. And also um, in 1888, he became the co-editor of Buddhist, the magazine of Buddhist Theosophical Society. Here's another quote from Anagarika Dharmapala about Helena Blavatsky. HPB, that's how he, uh, many people called her at that time. HPB helped me much in my efforts. Until the, to, the day of her departure from Adyar, HPB took care of me. She wrote to me to follow the light um, that is within me. I have strictly followed her advice and I'm glad to testify to her wonderful powers of mystic illumination." End of quote. You know, I can continue to quote Anagarika Dharmapala, but I think it has become obvious that it is uh, impossible to overestimate the enormous influence that Helena Blavatsky had on him. In 1924, the proceedings of Blavatsky Association were published. Uh, the chapter number four uh, was the letter from uh, Venerable Anagarika Dharmapala. He called his letter, My Association with HPB. I can only urge you to read the whole letter and I, I will conclude my small talk with the quotation from it. Love to all living beings, small and great, the desire of renowned central pleasures that impede the progress in the realm of spirituality and the strenuous efforts to uh, meritorious deeds for the betterment of humanity, forgetting self, have been to me a kind of spiritual pabulum which I have partaken since I came in touch with the wonderful personality of HPB." End of quote. 
Um, that's all from my part. Um, thank you very much for your attention. And again, I should say uh, it's a great honor for me to be together with you today. So I'm back to you.